Hello, this is MakerJ11, and here's my metal detector in progress. As you can see, it's not finished, it's still on the breadboard, and it, it works a little bit. Oh, here's a quarter, um, so it picks the quarter up about an mm, inch and a half, two inches away, so... And Penny picks up about the same distance, maybe a little closer. It's a dime. Piece of iron. So, it does work pretty good, um, much better than the single, or the couple transistor ones that I tried before. But, um, so it's on the breadboard there, it's based around a, um, I'm using, focus camera, TLC, or, yeah, TLC 556CN, um, dual 55 timer chip, so it works really good. Um, and then here's my 9-volt power supply and piezo disc, piezoelectric disc, and then I've got a couple of um, potentiometers here to adjust it and everything. And this is all based off of the Matchless Metal, e Metal Locator by Thomas Sorborg. I'll have the link to the PDF in the description for that. But here's the circuit, you can get it from the PDF. So you can see there's two 5 timers here. This one is basically um, set at a constant frequency to the transmit coil. So it basically makes a fixed magnetic um, oscillating field around this magnetic field, which is overlapped over this one. And then the the a pickup coil, receiver coil, is basically goes through a transistor amplifier, and then to this um, five five timer, which is acting as a trigger and threshold. So it basically um, I forget what you call it. It's kind of like when when the voltage gets to a certain point, it turns on, and once it when it drops to a, below a certain point, it turns off, and then it amplifies it through the piezo disc. So at least that's my understanding. But and then they've just got a bunch of um, variable resistors here to adjust where that point is that it um, will will trigger and um, turn off. So, but I have to hook it up to a oscilloscope here sometime and actually look at the signal and see what it's doing exactly but so the 55 timer that he actually recommends is the uh, Cosmos version which is ICM 7556 IPD um, the NE 556N the common one doesn't work I did try it it works a little bit but it draws 100 milliamps and it, that would drain your batteries really fast so it's not very efficient but yeah, so don't use the common one. You'd have to use one of the low power ones. Um, and mine seems to work okay. And then the coil, so you've got two coils here, one's transmit, one's receive. They're both exactly the same. They are uh, 70 turns of 28 gauge wire and wrapped on 120 millimeter form or uh, 12 millimeter or 12 centimeter. And then, so to make the coil, you basically wrap it on the form. And that's what I did. I have just a cardboard form that I made with nails in it. Um, so you make the coil of wire, then you wrap wrap it in tape to insulate the wires and keep it all together. Then wrap it in copper wire, bare copper wire, to um, make a Faraday cage. And you wrap the copper wire in aluminum foil then to uh, basically spread the Faraday cage out. But the copper wire is basically just to um, make a good contact with all the aluminum foil, because aluminum foil has breaks in it all through there. So you wrap it in aluminum foil then, and then in electrical tape again. And one of the important things is to have a gap in the aluminum foil there, so it doesn't make basically a winding. Because if you had that connected across there, it, it would basically short out and make a shorted winding, and that would make it not work at all. So you have to have a break in there. Um, so. And then you wrap it in electrical tape again to insulate it all. So the Faraday cage basically makes a fixed capacitance between the coils and the Faraday cage. If if you didn't have the Faraday cage there or the aluminum foil, then every time you bring it towards against or close to the ground, the capacitance would change against the coil and that capacitance would change the frequency and mess everything up. So it wouldn't be stable. And the Faraday cage both makes a fixed capacitance against the or with the coils and also keeps interference out so things like radio waves and stuff like that it just blocks all those so that's basically the design and you can get the um, get this uh, very nice PDF um, I'll have a link in the description to that but it's got everything you need to make it um, so 
And then there's other people that have made some changes to it. I actually made this, or somebody suggested on YouTube, um, adding this uh, potentiometer, which is across the transistor, or to the tran from the transistor to the um, ground. But I'll go over the, if I make any more modifications, I'll make some, I'll make a video that has all those changes in it. But, um, so yeah, so if I'll, I'm going to try and uh, improve the design a little bit because it doesn't work all that well. So, basically the way you tune it is you, or the way it works is the transmit coil is always uh, transmitting a set frequency of um, of magnetic field and when you have another coil, the receive coil, when it's on top like this, it's picking up all the signal and that's going to the um, to the to the output but when you overlap it, oh, it stops working here um, I think I my wire came off unconnected, yeah hook that back up so basically, you to tune it, you find a spot here where the, the it's called the null point, I believe, um, where the so this is so the transmit coil is broadcasting a large um, magnetic field out, and then this one picks that up. So if it was, well, it keeps coming unconnected. So if it was like this, it's picking up all of the magnetic field and transmitting it back to the receive coil. But as you get closer here to right here, now all the magnetic field from here, or part of the magnetic field is getting received by this part of the coil. The other part is getting received by this coil in the negative, in the opposite direction. And when, when it's like this, they're canceling each other out. So what you want to do is tune it just before it's picking some of that signal up and just when it's canceling all of it out. So you tune it right right in this point right here. Now now it's canceled out and then you adjust your potentiometers to get it really close to that point. Let's see if I can get it adjusted there. Okay, there we go. Now when you whoop, you can't bump it or else it'll mess your adjustments up. So now when you move your quarter over top of it, it it basically reflects more of the magnetic field onto like this side over here, which picks it up and sends it to the amplifier or whatever, to the other 5-5 timer. So it's a pretty interesting way it works, but as you can see, it doesn't work in the middle at all. It only works on these two sides. And then if you actually adjust it to the other side, uh, I'm not sure if I can. adjust it like here oh. sometimes it sometimes I can get it to work in the middle but so there's more like a blade here where it would actually sense the metal and then these two parts wouldn't work at all so it's an interesting little circuit though you could give it a try it's pretty simple but that's my first um, or my uh, prototype I guess you could say but um, yeah that's about it guys hope you enjoyed keep experimenting thanks for